subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. The blue whale is the largest animal on earth. It is more than 30 meters long and can weigh more than 150,000 kilos. If there's a blue whale anywhere near you, you will not be able to miss it. But blue whales live in the deep blue sea. Our oceans are not well explored at all. In fact, the myth is true. We do know more about the planet Mars than we do about the bottom of our own Earth's oceans. And blue whales that live deep below the sea continue to surprise us. Marine biologists last week have announced the discovery of a brand new population of blue whales in the Indian Ocean which were identified by a brand new whale song that we've never heard before. In this video, we'll take a look at how this discovery was made, what a whale song is and how whales communicate underwater. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. In a nutshell, the finding is that marine biologists have recorded a brand new whale song, a unique whale song that we've never heard before. We have documented whale songs from all over the world and when they discovered this new unique whale song that hasn't been heard before, they were able to deduce that this is a new population of blue whales. It could also likely be a new subspecies of blue whales. To put this discovery in context, Let's look at a little bit of a taxonomy background first. Most of us know what a genus is and what a species is. A genus is a family of closely related types of animals and a species is a specific type of animal. That's an oversimplification, but let's look at an example. Panthera is a genus. Panthera, as the name might suggest, is a genus of big cats. There are a number of species under the genus Panthera such as Panthera tigris or the tiger or Panthera leo or the lion. And when we see these scientific names written, typically it's two words. The first name is the genus and it's capitalized and the second name is the species and it is not capitalized and the whole thing is typically written in italics. Now species can also have subspecies. A subspecies, there is never one subspecies, so subspecies are always two or more populations of the same species living in different geographical areas and also having different physical or morphological characteristics even though they're essentially the same animal or plant, the same species. So tigers, for example, Panthera tigris, has two officially recognized taxonomic subspecies. The continental subspecies called Panthera tigris tigris, which includes the Bengal tiger as well as the Siberian tiger. And the Sunda subspecies called Panthera tigris sondaica, which includes tigers found in Java, Sumatra and Bali many of which are extinct right now. Of course, there are also different types. The Bengal tiger is clearly different from the Siberian tiger, but they're both technically the same subspecies. Similarly, blue whale is a species. Its scientific name is Baleonoptera musculus. There are a total of five subspecies of these blue whales that we've identified so far. In the Indian Ocean, we have identified four populations of whales, that is groups of whales, and we've thought previously that all four of these populations with different unique acoustic signature or sound signature belong to the same two or three subspecies that we've already categorized. How are these different populations identified? Naturally, we cannot comb through the depths of all oceans and find individuals or groups or populations of all blue whales. We don't have the time, resources, the technical expertise or the money for it. The process actually involves acoustic monitoring and identifying whale songs or the vocalizations that these blue whales produce. Whales communicate using the whale song or these noises and vocalizations that they produce. Marine mammals like whales and dolphins rely on sound more than any other sense because water distorts and dampens other senses. Vision is not accurate because of the way light is scattered underwater 
and smell is limited because the smell molecules don't disperse as effectively underwater as they do in air. But sound, as we know from our school physics, travels better in a denser medium than it does in a rarer one. The speed of sound is almost four times higher underwater than it is in air. So animals and mammals primarily that live underwater rely on sound and vibrations produced in the water column to communicate and understand their environment. This is also one of the reasons why so many environmentalists and marine conservationists are so worried about anthropogenic noise in our oceans or human produced noise such as those caused by ships and underwater sonar in military applications or underwater drilling or all kinds of other human activities. All of the human produced sounds interfere with the communication of marine mammals. Whales make sounds and noises to communicate including to find each other or to greet other individuals and also for locating food. They also make sounds for navigation, just like sonar, the sound bounces off objects and tells them about their surroundings. Whales make a variety of vocalizations or noises and even in a population within different social groups called pods, there exist different accents or different dialects that can help distinguish between different pods. Sometimes, some groups of sounds made by certain populations of whales are repeated in a recognizable pattern which we can identify as coming from a certain population. We call those whale songs and these vary from population to population. Whale songs are called songs because their structure is very comparable to human music. They might have a rhythm, a time signature and definitely have repeated identifiable patterns that help us identify which whales are making those particular sounds or singing that song. Interestingly, biologically, we don't fully understand how whales produce these vocalizations because they don't have vocal cords and they also don't have the required lip structure for this. We also don't know if whales sing for pleasure or if they derive enjoyment from their song, but we've managed to find out that there are a total of nine separate blue whale acoustic populations globally. Another thing we know is that because of human activity, blue whales and other whales are changing the way they sing and they're lowering their frequency as well over the past few years. In the Indian Ocean, we've identified four populations of whales previously and we thought that all four of these populations fit within the two to three known subspecies. Each of these populations has a distinct song. So if a marine researcher hears one of these songs and it is in the database, then the researcher would be able to identify which population that particular whale belongs to. However, researchers have now identified a brand new unique song that has not been documented before. So the first time the song was recorded was off the coast of Africa in 2017. In 2018, the song was also heard off the coast of Oman. The researchers first thought that this song was coming from the same group of whales that were previously identified near Sri Lanka. But it soon became clear that this was a brand new whale song that was not documented before. Later, the same song was also heard of the Chagos Islands, which is to the south of Maldives. In the Gulf of Oman, it was very loud and very clear. So by now, scientists had figured out that this song was likely coming from a new population of whales in the Northwest Indian Ocean not identified before. Something to remember is that the Arabian Sea is not very efficiently acoustically monitored. So it's no surprise that groups of blue whale populations have been living without human knowledge in these waters. Who knows, we might even discover more blue whale populations if our technology improves and our funding increases with more international cooperation and we start monitoring the oceans better acoustically. This finding is very exciting, but there's a problem. Whales globally are under threat of extinction. Whale fishing or whaling of a number of species of whales have brought their numbers down drastically globally. 
Just the blue whale, for example, went from 250,000 individuals to just 1,000 individuals by the mid-1950s. The numbers are now recovering because there is a global ban on commercial whaling, but whales and blue whales are still very much under threat. Now with this recent finding, we know that there is a brand new population of blue whales in the Indian Ocean and it is also likely to be a new subspecies of blue whales. But we don't know anything else about them. The scientists who made the finding have said that we don't know how many groups of these whales exist, what the strength of this population is, how many individual numbers there are. We don't know if these whales are endangered or if they are thriving. We don't know if they're close to being extinct. We don't know if there are hundreds of them or just a handful. We don't know anything. So marine biologists are now calling for urgent action into investigating this whale population, finding out their numbers and their conservation status so that we can figure out what we need to do to keep these new whales in the Indian Ocean safe and alive.